Rutgers basketball adds its third player from the transfer portal on Tuesday. Late afternoon, early evening, Merrimack guard Jordan Durkak, the Northeast Conference Player of the Year, the Northeast Conference Defensive Player of the Year as a sophomore this past season, has committed to Rutgers basketball, recently visited Seton Hall, Penn State, and Rutgers, ultimately Rutgers landing him. He also had a visit scheduled to USC with new coach Eric Musselman, never made the trip West Coast, going to stay home from Colonia, coming back to New Jersey, and let's break it all down. Wanted to get it out earlier. I, I was on the train ride home from New York, came home, saw my kids, uh, and uh, now getting to this reaction. But want to just talk about what it all means here uh, in terms of adding Dirk Hackey, 6'5", big guard. Um, and I think that, you know, he fits. Let's just go by the numbers first. Uh, in terms of his averages, he averaged 17 points a game, six rebounds, 3.9 assists, 2.1 steals. Uh, did average four turnovers a game. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, in terms of shooting, uh, just 27.5% from three. Uh, that is an issue as well. But overall, 72.4% from the foul line. He shot 46.6% uh, from uh, the floor. And in terms of his two-point uh, range, he shot 54.3%. He shot 59% at the rim. He had one of the highest assist rates in the country, 27.4, 115th nationally, one of the best steal rates in the country, 74th at 3.6. Uh, and then his free throw rate, how often the foul line? 47th nationally at 63.1%. Uh, he is a player that brings a lot to the table. He's versatile. But let's not forget, he's also a lockdown defender on the ball. He has tremendous size. He has a lot of confidence. He's a versatile player. He's not going to be a top scoring option for Rutgers. So while there might be a concern with this three-point shooting, he's going to be more spot up than off the dribble. And he shot 33% on spot up threes. He's going to he's gonna get looks in space when guys like Dylan Harper, Ace Bailey, Jeremiah Williams are penetrating, Tyson Acuff. You're going to have Dirk Hack out there on the perimeter. I think he's going to shoot better. Uh, but in terms of what he does really well, he's got vision. He's uh, unselfish. He's a good passer. He can get downhill. If you watch his film, uh, he's just really good with his body control and getting to the rim. Obviously, doing it at the high major level consistently is something you know that he's going to have to prove. But for in terms of comps, in terms of what we have to go by, let's look at what he did uh, last season in three high major games on the road at Florida, at Georgetown, at Cincinnati. He averaged 18 points, 5.7 boards, 2.3 assists, 2.3 steals, 5.3 turnovers. Uh, but he shot 54% from the floor, including three of nine from the floor uh, from three. And uh, I think what you take away from that is that he was the number one guy on the scout for those opposing teams, right? And he had really good success against high major teams. He was getting doubled a lot last season. Uh, he, by the way, is a very good rebounder for his size. And, you know, rebounding is a concern, I think, with this team as of right now. Uh, but I think he just brings a ton of versatility and athleticism. Uh, great quote uh, in an article uh, from Jerry Carino uh, that he, uh, Jordan Durkak, this is him speaking, and I quote, the reason for picking this school is the opportunity to play with some really, really talented guys. Uh, I'm super excited to play with guys like that, he said. For my role, I had multiple conversations with Coach Pike, Coach Pike about this. On most teams, your role is what you make of it. I'm a versatile player. I could be on the ball. I could be off the ball. I could play defense on the best player, and I can help side. Whatever the team needs, I want to win no matter what. If I have zero points, I have zero points. If I have 50 points, I have 50 points, unquote. Now, easier said than done, and I've spoken about this before. This is going to be the hardest job, hardest season of Steve Peichel's coaching career. There's going to be a lot of pieces in the puzzle that I have to fix. Steve Peichel can get the team chemistry, the team culture, everyone buying in. And, and I have full confidence that this staff and Steve Peichel in particular – you know, is really vetting guys that he's adding to this roster and bringing to this program. But the bottom line is now he's brought in the number seven scorer in the country. He's brought in an, a, a proven uh, spot up three point shooter that could stretch the floor and comes from a, a winning program. And he is now bringing in a conference player of the year. Now, granted, the Northeast Conference wasn't great, but conference player of the year, 
His head coach, Joe Gallo, has said in interviews, who, by the way, is a very good coach, has said how high he thinks the ceiling is uh, and, and his potential. And this is a guy that, you know, can give you defense on the perimeter, can defend multiple positions. He has a high assist rate. And if you could buy into his role off the bench and be a true glue guy for this team, it is a great value add. He also has two years, by the way, uh, remaining. He also was tra has been tra training with uh, at times with Geo Baker, his younger brother does as well, who uh, is reportedly very good. Uh, so there's some some connections there. Credit to Geo. Uh, but I said all along this offseason, Rutgers needs hoopers desperately. They need to improve the competition. And Dirkak is an... I think unquestioned Hooper. I think Martini is a Hooper. Acuff is a Hooper. I read quotes recently from his dad talking about how, um, you know, he uh, uh, is so competitive and how he uh, trained him to fight through adversity and his mental toughness. This team needs that so bad. And all three of these guys bring experience and they all bring a certain level of skill set, right? And when you add that type of experience, this team, with the 24 class coming in with Dylan Harper, Ace Bailey, Dylan Grant, by the way, recently moved up, didn't even play this year and moved up to a four star on rivals. Uh, and uh, that credit to Richie uh, O'Leary and uh, Michael Broadman for mentioning that in their podcast today, talking about how uh, scouts and analysts reviewed uh, past footage. He really tore it up on the EYBL circuit last year. So his stock is up. You have Bryce Dorch coming in, obviously Lathan Somerville as well. A uh, lot of talent there. You have Jeremiah Williams coming back. I had him on the podcast today. He talked about his excitement level and how important it is for this team to be together in early June, to have the full summer, to have the full off season, to really uh, work together and to be competitive and play together. It's exciting. It's exciting. This team is going to be versatile, ton of athleticism, ton of size. They're going to be able to have so many different looks. Pico's ability to mix and match the rotation. I think they're going to run a lot. They're going to be very up-tempo, be able to press a lot. Um, pairing guys that fit, right? Different skill sets. That's what he's doing. And for fans that had the delusion that Rutgers is just going to go in and, you know, take the top 10 center, take a top 10 guard, you know, and just cherry pick. It's not the world we live in. And NIL dictates so much. And I've talked about it all offseason. People are probably sick of me saying it. But I just think that you have to look at every decision from a program's perspective, from a player's perspective, NIL is a factor, right? And unfortunately, Rutgers isn't a three, four, five million dollar NIL program. They're just not. But guess what? There's not many of those programs, maybe 15, 20. Uh, but what they're doing, and 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 truth be told, I think if Steve Pichel had his druthers and had the ability to go in and throw a ridiculous amount of money and just cherry pick players, I, I he's all about fit. He's all about culture. He's all about team uh uh, just chemistry and building a winning team. This is not a talent show. This is not a talent competition. You have to find guys that, that can play certain roles that can make you a winning team. And I think Dirk Hack checks all, all those boxes. Yeah, he turned it over a lot. He didn't shoot great from three, but he was getting, He was the number one guy in the conference and despite all that, right? So now he's coming to a high major team and he's going to have to play a role and he can defend, he can pass, he can handle the rock. He can get to the rim. He can get to the free throw line. He can hit foul shots. I think he's going to shoot better from three. So I think it's a really good addition. Rutgers now has two scholarships to fill. Obviously, they need a big man. You know, they're not going to get a top 10, top 15 big man on the market right now. They're just not. Uh, Balo committing to Indiana on Tuesday. Jeff Goodman reporting he was asking for $1.2 million. I have said uh, recently – I think the big man market is going to start to, to play out now. Um, I think teams have been waiting uh, that May 1st deadline to enter the portal. Uh, and uh, I think things will start to uh, kind of work itself out. It's going to be interesting to see some of the guys that think they're worth a certain amount. And wise will they actually be, will the market, market actually dictate that they are? Remains to be seen. Cliff Fulmore is part of that. But in terms of what Rutgers gets, I, I know they're, they're looking at multiple options, but at this stage, they're bringing in such offensive talent. And by the way, I think they need to fill that other spot with a true 3 and D guy, an established three-point shooter in their career that can also defend. I think that would make this roster even deeper and just give them uh, a skill set that they really need. Uh, they need another three-point shooter, but they need another defender too, I think. So if you get a 3 and D guy, fill that first, 
And then you can put all your energy, all your remaining NIL into finding the right fit at center. And honestly, I think they're going to need a guy to defend the rim that can alter shots, be create chaos down low, that can own the glass rebounding wise, that can block shots, and that can run. You're going to need a, a big that can create offense on their own, off offensive rebounds, and a rim runner, a guy that can be the trailer, that can clean up the glass on missed layups, that can, uh, you know, with all these passing guards that the record is going to have, that can find in transition. I think that's the type of big you want. You don't want a big that's going to command, you know, 10 shots on post-ups. That's not the way this team wants to play. They want to space the floor. So if we can get a big that can stretch the floor as well, you know, listen, if you get a big that can shoot threes, great. More power to you. But uh, just in terms of reality, I think that's what they're going to ultimately get. Uh, and I think, again, it's about fitting all the pieces together. The other thing I mentioned, just in terms of now you have Dirk Hack, Martini, and Dylan Harper from New Jersey. I really like that fact, especially Martini and Dirk Hack, two guys that were not originally recruited by Rutgers, coming to Rutgers. These guys are going to be hungry. They're going to understand the significance of the moment. They're going to understand what's on the line this season for Rutgers in a way that, you know, yeah, I think all these guys coming in, veterans coming in, one last run, uh, the class, the recruiting class coming in, you know, being difference makers for this program. But Martini and Dirkak have the unique perspective of being Jersey guys. They're going to know what this will mean to the state, what this will mean for their legacies, and what this means opportunity-wise for them at Rutgers. And, and it's just going to mean more. And those kind of intangibles, right? Those things don't show up in the recruiting rankings. And Dirk Heck, by the way, is a four-star in the transfer portal rankings for 24-7 sports. Just wanted to point that out. But um, those intangibles, right? Uh, are these guys in the gym late at night taking shots together? Are they pushing each other? Is the competitiveness in a way that's going to bring the best out of everyone? Is everyone going to accept roles? Uh, are they going to understand and accept and embrace the moment? And are they going to achieve greatness together because they all understand the opportunity at, at hand and they're all going to utilize their skill sets in a way that work and can Steve Peichel get all that to, to, to mesh together? A lot of questions. This could all go badly. I'm not waving the pom-poms and saying, you know, I've saw, saw tweets by some attention seekers saying Rutgers, you know, is, is uh, going to be in a final four and all that. Listen, I don't know. And there's no guarantees. And this is not going to be top 10 most talented teams in the country, even with Dylan and Ace. But is it a winning team? Is it a team that can be greater than the sum of its parts? That is the key question. And that is what Steve Peichel is working to building. And that's what this coaching staff is working to build. And that's what I'm excited about because I can see the vision. And I think this team is going to be super exciting. Are they going to be really good? Remains to be seen. Got to big, get a, a number one big that you can rely on. And I really think you got to get a, a three and D shooter. But how are the intangibles? How are these guys fit culture wise, chemistry wise? Um, you know, and just in terms of being true hoopers. And I think he's getting a lot of them. And the competitiveness within this team, the confidence within this team, it's going to be super high. So I'm excited. Check out my interview with Jeremiah Williams on Tuesday as well. Talks a lot about what makes Pykel different. Uh, talks about the, you know what players coming from the mid-major level need to do to adjust, what he's learned from it, what he learned from his time off, uh, how excited he is to play with this team next season, the importance of the offseason, all that. Check it out. Thanks so much for watching and listening once again. If you could like and subscribe, the more you can put the word out about the Scarlet Faithful podcast, I really appreciate it. Thanks so much once again. 